Good day, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. My name is Zabago, and with me once again is... Michelomaniac. Hello, Internet. Hello. Uh, so, this week has been an exciting one for Star Trek Online, because Cryptic has released their first expansion, uh, or, so they, or so they are calling it, uh, to the game, uh, the Legacy of Romulus. This uh, this expansion has added uh, Romulans as an actual faction, even though you actually choose to side with either the Federation or the Klingons, uh, and it still the game still ends up being a two faction game. But hey, it's still pretty cool. And it's, the, it's the Romulans... mostly for like PvP purposes anyway, because the stories are between the three factions are completely different up until like the 40s at which point they're all the same anyway even for Klingons so yeah pretty much um but and the the Romulan story is very well done and that is something we will investigate much later in this series but for now we are starting by looking at the awesome brand new character select screen which looks really sharp and sometimes just breaks horribly uh like actually I wonder if it'll do it this time Yes, it has! That is great. There's something about uh, my main character and all of his bridge officers where, uh, like, I don't know, the first time it tries to load all his stuff, it just sort of breaks horribly. Uh, Mecha will... I'll show Mecha later, but yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks, it looks looks really goofy. When, when I load it, it basically kind of pieces them in one at a time, which I it, oh. it's a thing with cryptic games because it happens in everywhere, too. Yeah, mine... Yeah, I'll like I'll I'll show you later, Mecca, because it looks yeah. so goofy. The the weird thing with mine is is if if you can see it, it shows like your your bridge crew off to the side. On one of my characters, it basically shows the same bridge officer twice. <laughs> I don't know why. Right, so, yeah, I don't know why either. So last time, uh, we what do we do? We uh, we, we got promoted. Blew up, we we blew up a super weapon and thus got promoted. So. Let's uh let's talk to Admiral Quinn. Crack crack Starfleet officers here getting promoted for blowing shit up. Yep. Yeah. And you know just just a formality because you know we've reached level 20, which means we have we are the next rank uh which gives us so the game gives you a free costume change uh at each rank because one of one of the costume options is actually putting the um the appropriate uh, rank uh, bars on your collar mm -hmm. or wherever it is for whatever costume you are wearing. Uh, but it also means we get a new ship. And for me, I think, if I remember correctly, I actually have the option of a C-Store one this time because I think I actually mm. bought one for this rank. Meanwhile, I am getting a... I forget what it's called. Oh, the the, uh, uh, the one with the four the one with the four nacelles. Yeah, I believe heavy cruisers is what the game calls it. It's essentially yeah, a I've... an upgraded stargazer. Yeah, yeah. One of the stargazers is it. One of them is based on the stargazer. Now the the C store option for this rank is the Excelsior, aka the ship that Starfleet used for over a century. Yeah, uh, it that one actually used to be. Uh, a little overpowered because its special ability was uh like i wouldn't really say overpowered like it, it's it's stats are still very good especially the mm -hmm. t5 version it is it the t5 version is actually still um yeah looking around very, i see a lot of competitive people, i see a lot of people using the t5 version as like their in-game cruiser yeah it, like, it is still very competitive um but its its ability when it was first released was that uh, it had a um, a special transwarp drive, which basically allowed you to transwarp to any starbase in the game. Uh, Cryptic has since actually allowed you to just straight up transwarp to any starbase in the game as a normal thing. Mm -hmm. So its ability was nerfed, so to speak, uh, to make it instead uh, like a thing. I think it just allows your transwarp to recharge faster oh no it, it's still it, it adds a few more locations that you can transwarp to mm. uh and the uh, it also comes with another console which uh gives you a bonus to warp core efficiency 
I don't know if I call it overpower. It just it seems mostly like a convenience thing. It was very convenient, uh, but at the time it came out, it was also kind of annoying because the um, the cooldowns on Transwarp was kind of ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. it was like old WoW Hearthstone style uh, cooldown timers. So it's like twelve hours. Well, I think it was like an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, whereas now. Uh, I don't know what wild down. stones are anymore. <laughs> yeah, well now it now it's 15 minutes. Oh wow! Which is also what uh, it is in, if I remember correctly, that's what the uh, the cooldown is in uh, Star Trek Online for it as well. But at the same Something time, like the way you are able to get around the galaxy, transwarping back to Seoul and then flying around, like it's not a big, it's not a big hassle. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so the 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 basic model for the heavy escort at this tier is actually based on the Akira class, um, which is a very much fan uh, favorite in Star excuse me in Star Trek Online, and there is in fact a T5 Akira version which is really really cool. So much um, so instead, that when they were doing Star Trek Enterprise, they decided to make the NX01 look like the Akira. <laughs> yes, um, but. Instead, I'm going actually going to be claiming the T five the the T three alternate uh, heavy escort refit, which is based on the USS Thunderchild. Um, its its special gimmick is that it comes with a console uh, called the Point Defense System, which, when activated, uh, acts like a better version of the Point Defense turret that uh, I got as a pre order. Um, but it, because it's an activated ability, it don't, it doesn't last very long. But it's also better. Mm-hmm. And by claiming the Thunderchild version, um, it uh, also uh, it's it also allows me to use all of the other parts uh, as desired to uh, to put it together. Uh, I, yeah, I keep I keep not making sure I look up names before I get these ships either. It'll be fine. Alright, whatever. That that works that works good enough for now. Then I better equip my ship and set it as my primary. Yeah, oh, I, I took everything off my other ship first. I got a lot of stuff here I need to actually sell off to. Oof, let's quickly do that. And I will I will show my ship in a second. Well, what's this going to cost me to to change it? Hmm. I thought the first one was to, free, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, the first the first rename or the first No, the first first customization. Yeah, first customization is always free. Uh, it's, um, it's wanting to charge me a thousand energy credits, which isn't oh, much, uh, so I don't really care. Uh, that's that's because you um, you changed the uh, um, the bridge. Oh, so yeah, I did. The, the bridge the bridge is never free. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like I like this this future bridge. So. Yeah. I think I'm good with that. So spoilers, I'm not going to be using the ship. Probably beyond this episode. So. <laughs> Actually, what's oh geez, yeah, like I got Mark IV stuff on so. the Thunder Child. I probably don't. And I think I think I mentioned it as well. But um, one of the things that was added in uh, Legacy of Romulus is that all ships now have warp cores. Uh, the warp cores primarily give a bonus to uh, your speed in sector space. Um, but there, once you get to the higher version, like once you get to the rarer versions, they start adding uh, bonuses to um, other stats as well, mm-hmm. and, and they are really cool. I don't, I probably don't actually don't really want to equip that weapon. It's not better than what I've got on anyway. Yeah, it's like I've got a mix of stuff that is better and isn't better. Yeah, in fact, in fact, if I'm going to equip any new torpedo, I might as well equip the Harpang. Yeah, I've got the uh, 
the heart ping on my front and I'm keeping the, the photon on my back. Yeah, I, I've never been a fan of torpedoes in the back. Uh, I, I understand why. At uh, this they point, are it's just a matter of resources. <laughs> yeah, like I understand why they're useful, but that I've never been keen on them as a. One tact I heard was to mount uh, quantums on the back because they have a 180 degree firing arc, so they're useful when you're broadsiding for cruisers. Oh, so okay, that 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 would be pretty useful, yeah. All right, and I also should, uh, now that I'm a higher rank, I should also promote my officers. Promotions! A very important thing to remember to, um, to set your stations. Yes. Which is more for myself much. than anything else. Those, or do I want? Hmm. No, actually, yeah, I want shield and health healing more than yeah. That's that's good. And then promote everyone because even if um, even if you can't make use of their added uh, space abilities, I got um, eject warp plasma on, on my uh, available now. Excellent. Oh. Eject warp plasma is actually a very useful, uh, yes, it's, it's very, very useful fun. ability. Right. You essentially leave yeah. a cloud of deadly plasma behind you as you're flying, and yeah, it damages and it anything slows. that flows and slows anything that goes through. Yeah, damage damages and slows. It's very useful. Probably more useful on escort just because you can like maneuver better, but still pretty. Yeah. Easy. I, I have actually had it be very useful on a cruiser um, for uh, some missions, um, but it probably would have been more useful on a uh, uh, probably been more useful on an escort just because you can uh, cover a, an area better. Mm -hmm. All right, so that now let's uh, do some equipping as well while I'm here. Later on, I will go through and like super get everything. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. It's just I have some things. All right, well, all right. Well, that's en enough of that sort of stuff. Let's uh let us actually carry on to the mission. Our now. mission. Because yeah, last time we uh, we uh, stopped a plan to make super gorn, and we also blew up uh, a super weapon. So clearly, this time we are going to uh, go back in time. Yeah, that's a natural progression. Yeah, I mean that's that's Star Trek. Okay, I don't know if you're out in space yet. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'm heading out to sector space right now, and then I'll pick up the mission. Amusingly, I, I warped out someone with a name very appropriate to a ship you would use called the USS Reacquired. <laughs> right, so our next mission is called The City on the Edge of Never. Oh, and as people can see, there's also a brand new... Um, window type for talking to contacts and as people might also notice there is a more El Carzi style uh, interface mm -hmm. which looks kind of nice and there is a uh, I'll just actually show it once I get out of this mission um, so anyway um, so the, the the basic thing about this mission is that uh, by after analyzing uh, MR Sin's uh, laboratory they found uh, some some notes uh, about the past and a certain location that Bavat was dealing with so uh, we're going to go check some stuff out because you Ooh. know dealing with the past is never is never good not right, really uh, no okay so 
or was it under? Okay, so you can um, now. Now there are a there's an option for a number of of um, different UI colors. The sad thing about this is that if you choose any UI color, it actually forces that setup on all of your characters, regardless of what their faction is. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you leave it at default, then it will be the default color for whatever faction you are. And, but the options that they have, there's there's a lot of actually really nice ones, from the next generation to Voyager to well, what they had for Klingons. Um, then other ones for various sub races like the Orions or the Gorn. Mm -hmm. uh, to be and to be but, fair, it's not exactly hard to uh, change it. Yeah, it's okay, so we go to it is Pi it Canis. is pretty nice. Yeah, we want to go to so Pi Canis. So I have Regulus. Yeah, it's a nice looking UI though. It is. I, I I think I think it does it does look more more tricky. Uh, yeah, it definitely looks much nicer. More old tricky. Abrams tricky would be like, you know, an iPod iOS layout. <laughs> you know, I kind of hope that they get some stuff like that in the game at some point. Well, they did find a, a kind of sneaky way to add the Narada from, from the 2009 movie. Yeah, they did. That The, the new lockbox uh, ship uh, is a um, uh, Borg technology design Tal Shiar cruiser, which looks pretty nice. I, I don't know if I would ever use it if I got one, but it looks pretty Pretty nice. I uh, probably would on my Romulan just for kicks. I probably would as well. I don't know if I would use that one or the one that you can buy for Lobby on my Romulan though. The one you can buy for Lobby. Uh, that's that's the one that also... actually looks more like the Narada, but I mean both of them. Yeah. Have, both of them have that kind of spiky Romulan ship design. Yeah. the the one that the one that you get um, from the lockbox actually looks a lot like uh, one of the boss ships in one of the task force uh, missions, mm -hmm. uh, which actually makes sense because that is also a uh, Borg modified version of the Scimitar from Star Trek Nemesis. Because what do you, what's worse than taking a you know giant ship with a planet destroying weapon? Think Borg technology to it. Yeah, because it is, it is actually kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of broken, but it's a boss, so I mean, you, that's what you kind of expect. That is that, and that is actually one of the funner uh, task force missions. Hopefully, at some point, I'll have a, we'll we will have the opportunity to show them off. Because mm -hmm. uh, I I think that the the uh, task forces are. Fairly well designed. Um, the balance of them may be a little off. Um, oh, with uh, with uh, a patch in um, Legacy Romulus, they also re-added the uh, crystalline entity as a permanent uh, event that you can do, and I think it's a lot harder than when it was the temporary event a few months ago. Mm. I haven't tried that at all. I probably should. I, given I have a level fifty captain now, I, I haven't really done any in-game stuff. Yeah, it that is a pretty good one for getting some of the um, the uh, reputation marks you need. Oh man, like it it, it it's one of the ones that awards the new reputation marks uh, for the Nakura Strike Force, and the rewards you get from the Nakura Strike Force are so good. Like I really want to get some of those unlocked. Because they are a lot of special Tetrion weapons, and so I just we are really like. Now in Pycanus. Yeah, so here we are heading to JFS forty-three. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Yeah. Close. close. Very close.
So I, um, I wonder if this is going to involve the Guardian of Forever from the episode City on the Edge of Forever. Oh, pfft. No, that's just a coincidence. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> no, a lot, a lot there... of Romulan players flying around here. Yep. Well, this is a closer they... sector to, to their space anyway. Yeah, like they, they have a bunch of missions... Uh, in this sector as well, and oh, some of these guys actually have some of those guys are already max level. In fact, because some of those ships are yeah, I've, in tier five. I've, I saw a, uh, I saw someone flying around in the oh I forget what it's called the 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 one that separates the oh, ship the that separates. Hakona. Hap, hap. Uh, ah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the Hakona. Yeah, Hakona. I saw someone flying around in the SRA. I'm just thinking that's pretty fast. The, yeah, and I think that one looks kind of nice. I think it's. I think what's also really goofy is how they claim so many of those T5 alternates are based on the Daedriex, and none of them look like the Daedriex. Yeah. Like, the Hakona is probably about as far away from looking like the Daedriex as you can get while still being a Romulan ship. Yeah. Sadly, the, the, the Romulan ship I'm least interested in flying is the one from the show itself, so... <laughs> Okay, JS uh, JFS forty seven. Yeah, there's uh, there are a lot of really nice Romulan designs, and mm. I'm looking forward to showing them off once we I'm... get to that ser that part of the game. Yeah, I'm just waiting for them to uh, to to get in the get in a downsized version of the Scimitar because I'm I would be willing to bet that's something they have in the pipeline. Yeah, probably. So we have to go save the USS Kirk. Yep. He got a ship named after him. He probably had a lot of ships named after him. Did In Bones fact, get a ship? That. No. Well, you know, he's... We just don't talk about that. Yeah, so I think I, think I mentioned it last time... But uh, the special gimmick of the Harpang torpedo, not only that it does a lot of damage, but uh, if it hits, even if it does, even if it gets uh, absorbed by shields, um, it gives a debuff onto the uh, enemy ship. Where mm -hmm. after like ten or so seconds, uh, the uh, radiation explodes, dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, it's which is pretty nice. Pretty, it's pretty handy. But the problem is that. For a lot of encounters, uh, you'll probably have killed the ship before the radiation detonates. Yeah. I, uh, it detonates like that. Yep. Yeah, I actually got... You, you get them on the Romulan side, too. Uh, not from the Doomsday Machine mission, but oh, yeah. something yeah, else. A, just some random Yeah, I remember, I remember hearing that there was a similar one. In fact, there used to be a different... Uh, there used to be a different... Um, uh, bon uh, thing that you get from it, and I can't remember what it was. I'd have to look it up. But if I remember correctly, it was like the Radiant um, Plasma Torpedo, and it was apparently super broken. So they ended up getting, they ended up dumping it and just giving people a version of the Harpang instead. Mm -hmm. So I am flying to USS Hanna Barbera. <laughs> I, and, and I would hope people know who Hanna Barbera is. Uh, yeah, they did some show with a bunch of stoners and a dog. Yeah, I don't think very many people watch that. It, it couldn't have been that good. They also did a rip off of the Venture Brothers. <laughs> Uh, you would. So, so also fun. Another funny thing involving MMO economics. Um, right now, if you sell like rank five ish equipment on the uh, the exchange, it is going for huge amounts of money. <laughs> like I sold a mine launcher the other day for like two hundred thousand. When a rank eleven, you know, rank end game one costs like fifty thousand or something like that. 
Really? Yeah, because you know the new expansion's out, so people are leveling new characters, and they're they're willing to blow lots of money on their end game characters for for equipment. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one thing one thing I need to do is uh, from the new from the new lockbox, I actually have two of the uh, Mark Twelve uh, uh, special phaser miniguns, and I'm probably going to send them to my uh, to my Romulan character. That's handy. Yeah. Because the the new uh, the new weapon. Uh, the new energy type that they've added uh, as a lockbox reward is actually pretty nice. Um, it's basically a combination of um, it's a com it's a combination of uh, plasma and disruptors. Yeah, I've, I've it, gotten uh, a few of those through the um, through the story. Okay, I got like for for ships, not not ground weapons yet, but. Yeah, I I've got I've got a few like cannons uh, from the lock boxes that I'll be giving to my Romulan as well. Yeah, it's sad because I, I got I got the uh, they were they were disruptor uh, plasma disruptor cannons, and then like immediately after that I did a uh, uh, the minefield queued mission and got like purple disruptors that are way better. So <laughs> I'm not actually using. Yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, like the. The big, the big bonus of the, um, what's it, what they call it, the nanite disruptors, I believe they call them, um, is yeah, they they are, they they not only have a chance to give a damage over time effect, but they have a chance to give a uh, damage received debuff, which can be super useful. Mm -hmm. um, like all 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 of the hybrid guns are are incredibly useful because. Uh, you know, because they allow you to have multiple buffs yeah. in just a single weapon. Um, like I've, I have wanted to get much more of the phased Tetrion version, which is basically a phaser and a Tetrion. So it has both the uh, chance to deal bonus damage to all, um, to all shields, plus the chance to knock out uh, um, a subsystem. Anyway, so uh, for some reason the Klingons only wanted to kidnap uh, Lieutenant uh, Miro Paris. I have no idea why they would want that. Not do, at do you? all. Not at all. Like, who? Why would they want her? I know they they risk invoking the wrath of her father and her yeah. mother. Uh, and her mother is the more dangerous one, honestly. No, no, no. That's what that's what Tom Paris wants you to think. Remember Tom Paris, the Ace Commando. Pilot, uh, field medic, <laughs> most competent man on Voyager. Anyway, suddenly a whole lot more Klingon ships arrived, so we'd better uh, get rid of them. Yeah, that Harpang explosion is pretty cool too. Given that we were both using it. Yeah. Okay, I I think that ship has been disabled. Oh, we only have to disable them. Whoops. Yeah. Well, that one at least because that the named one is the one that has uh, morale on it. Oh yeah, we probably want her alive, don't we? Well, I I, th I think her captain would appreciate that. Yeah, so would her parents. I, and I just remembered why I was saying. Here's my eject warp plasma. Let's see if it hits anything. <laughs> That's probably not going to hit anything from where you're using it. Uh, well, the the bird of prey like cloaked and then flew into it, so. Oh, okay. That's why I was going for because I saw it was kind of turning into my path. But yeah, uh, eject warp plasma is is very useful, especially if you are, I'd say more if you are more of an offensive character mm -hmm. and you have. A lot of uh, bone, like you just have a lot of extra um, um, engineering slots that you don't need. Yeah. Then, like you can easily uh, just fill one of them with uh, eject war plasma and and mess around with folks. It's probably more useful in PvP, but there are definitely uh, PVE missions where it is very mm -hmm. useful, like one of the special task forces. Yeah, I have it on my, my uh, level 50 Captain Rhinos and in, in the 
quote unquote promo Odyssey, and I have a, I had a system for, or had a, a I have a slot using that too. So yeah, uh, the uh, the uh, the promo Odyssey is still a pretty great chip. Yeah, I just the, the, decided to use it the, for uh, basically change of pace. Yeah, like the the C store ones are technically better, but the promo Odyssey is still really good. Promo Odyssey is also free. It was also free. That is, I'm a cheap. Very... You can't tell. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say cheap. I mean, you. you I don't. I, I people... don't want to blow a ton of money on like a bunch of different ships when I'm only going to use a couple, basically. Yeah, like, not everyone is independently wealthy and able to spend a lot of money that too. on on this game. God uh, bless like, the uh, ones who are keeping it free for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, like, there are a lot of them that I really like and I am totally willing to buy. Yeah, honestly, uh, I mostly look at the, the later ones because, like, I, I don't think I would buy one of the, uh, you know, the earlier level ones just because you level so fast you're not going to be using it that much. Yeah, like, that's... I, I For the most part, I haven't bothered buying any of the low-level... Well, I shouldn't say that. I, I've got You got the level Steam one, but that was for a pack. Yeah. Yeah, that was for a pack. I, I mean, I've got the Thunder Child here, but that was actually more for its look. Yeah, plus this, uh, isn't, because... this isn't exactly low level anyway. It's, it's, yeah. We're going to be spending a decent uh, amount of time at in the uh, the 20s here. Yeah, uh, the next one that I'm going to use is... Um, the next ship that I'm going to use has uh, uh, a very, very powerful bonus that scales... Mm -hmm. So it's super useful to have at all levels. Uh, oh, another the thing as quad well as cannons. The quad cannons, yeah. Another thing as well that's uh, useful about the low-level ships is that their um, their looks still carry on to any other version of that chassis. So if I were to pick up the T5 Akira, uh, I would still be able to use the Thunderchild skin on it, um, even though. It, the, the Thunder Child is actually a tier three ship, so you know it, it. It it at least makes the investment that you put into these low level leveling ships yeah. worth something in the end. And, I and they also some... do scale. The the lower level ones don't cost as much because of that. that yep, yep. That's also true. The low the low level ones tend to be a fair bit cheaper. Than the uh, higher level ships, uh, like the tier one variants, I think are around five dollars, mm -hmm. as I recall. The five hundred um, uh, Zen. Yeah, so they're the. Uh, you might you might want those. Yeah, I think I want those. I'll pass because cannons aren't really useful for me. Yeah, I got, I got that other set of cannons that I should put on as well. But yeah, the. Uh, the tier one alternates are all about five dollars, whereas the uh, the tier five alternates tend to be twenty five, but some of them are uh, are twenty. Yeah. It sort of depends on whether it's meant to be a tier five or a tier five point five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I mostly look to to stuff I would still be using at end game for that. Yeah, I should actually probably take one of my. Tactical guys instead of another. Yeah, I will take two, my Bajoran commando lady. Yeah, because we like two science guys is enough. Because you don't screw with Bajoran commandos. No, you don't. They'll kill you and your entire family. So one thing that was kind of hilarious about this mission. Um, back in when the game first came out was that uh, there was kind of a bug in how this level worked as well as the subsequent level, uh, the subsequent mission, so that sometimes the game got super confused and uh, ran both of them at the same time. Whoops. Yeah, I, it was it was really goofy. I have no idea how it managed to do it, but it was sometimes run both, both of the missions at once, and... Well, it lets you run two missions at once, so you know that's kind of a that's kind of a bonus. I can't, we're, can't we're, complain we're doing about a two parter. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, actually, for all intents and purposes, it actually is a two parter. Mm -hmm. 
which we will see as soon as we get to uh, that part. I mean, we're, we're not going to get anything as epic as Mr. War Fire, but... <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure is regarded as like one of the best moments in television history. Just like in general, not even counting, you know, not even narrowing it down to sci-fi. Oh yeah? I'm pretty sure a lot of people consider that one of the best moments in television history, yeah. Hmm. At least best cliffhangers. Yeah, they, they definitely made... Uh... This mission hasn't necessarily been remastered, but it has been touched up, mm -hmm. so it is way better than it was uh, when it first came out. Especially since they've um, fixed up how basically the plot of this of this mission actually works. Because the plot of it before was a little on the nonsense side. Mm -hmm. Like, just just a little bit. Uh, but after they because time uh, travel in Star Trek is always perfectly logical. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I mean, but but more that uh, like sort of why a lot of this stuff was happening in the first place, and not necessarily that you were going back in time. Mm -hmm. Like that, like that's what was kind of nonsense. Yeah. But um, once they uh, once they sort of made Bavat uh, a more important figure. In the entire uh, Klingon story, um, uh, for this set of missions, like the whole thing made a little bit more sense. Oh, look! Speaking of the Bavat, there he is over there with uh, Lieutenant Paris. I kind of like how the implication through the dialogue is that he's kidnapping her, but she's just kind of running behind him without being like handcuffed or anything. Yeah, and like she even <laughs> says, "I, I don't want to go." I mean, the Guardian talks to us. Yep. And we'll answer some questions. with. I, I would mock because... the voice acting, but considering he was originally from the 60s. Yeah. So anyway, we need to go back in time. And because the uh, the Guardian is... Oh, yeah, so that's why. Because this mission ends right here, and then we instantly step into the next one. Yep. Let me get new ground pat weapons. Yeah. So this base will go right into the next mission, Past Imperfect, where the Guardian of Forever will transport me and my ship to 2270. That's like 200... No, 130 years this ago. Is, this is what, 2409? Yeah. Yeah, 130-ish years ago. So, so anyway, we're, we're finally... going to... Yes. Sorry. Okay, there yeah. we go. All right, yep, that's fine. Let's say we're finally giving up the Ghostbusters gun. Well, you are at least. Okay, fine. I'll go. Th I'll go back in time, then I'll switch out the Ghostbusters gun. This one, the, the one I just got, is just plain better. Oh, huh, well, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I'll. I think I'm going to. Uh, probably swap as well. Who's that oh, voice? But... Unknown ship. This is the USS Enterprise. Please respond. Okay, something that was kind of goofy. Uh, that I guess I guess they broke it for this is that um, in the original dialogue box they just had a blank face uh, for that voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the new dialogue box, they left it as my communications officer. So he started vocalizing. Oh, the, see, I actually, I actually saw, I actually saw Spock. Huh. So. Um, okay, okay, maybe. So maybe that is what it actually. Yeah. Maybe that is because well, I the, saw, the, I saw, I saw <laughs> quote unquote Spock as rendered in this game. Okay. So maybe, maybe I was just confusing what it is I saw. Um. So we gotta go save on. Kirk. How many people get to say that? Well, we are. Well, actually, I guess we are. 
Did I? Okay, nope, that's good. All right, that that's. Oh, you've already you you left without me. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Getting ready. That's I fine. thought you were. I thought you were Some... like right behind me. <laughs> no, it's all right. Someone someone needed to save the Enterprise, and that someone was apparently not going to be me. Well, I'm. We're still fighting them. I'm mostly just getting their attention rather than you know actually hurting them to any real degree. Yeah, because this is one of the missions where the guy you're supposedly rescuing is actually invincible. Well, yeah, because it's 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 Kirk. Are you implying he's not invincible? Except to Bridges. Well, I I think the I think the implication from this mission was in fact that uh, if you didn't show up here because uh, these D7s are backed up by some guy with technology from 130 years in the future that the Enterprise blows up. Which is explaining why these things aren't just instantly exploding to us and our technology yeah. from 150 years and 130 years in the future. Yeah. But that doesn't quite explain why, uh, when we went back in time for that other mission, why they didn't uh, instantly explode to our more powerful weapons. Because Section 31. Yep, clearly. Those guys. I'm waiting to see how those those missions play out on the Romulan side, because I'm wondering if, like... Oh, that, if, that if, so if Section great. 31 really does just tell up you know, make their existence known to to agents of a foreign power, essentially. <laughs> like, and it it still lists Franklin Drake as the contact, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Well, I don't know. I, I went Klingon on my on my on that Romulan. Oh, uh, so. well, I'm I went Federation on mine, so we will soon find out. I mean, even even using the the. Okay. Okay. Now it's that time, my, my science yeah. officer. Yeah, at that time it was very clearly my science officer, and she was vocalizing to the dialogue. My science officer shall now always be in my mind, voiced by Lauren Nimoy, even though she's a female trill. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will just um, ignore the Enterprise and run away, because we are very clearly not from this time. It would be a violation of the Prime Directive, or something. Yep. The Temporal Prime Directive. Yes, which I'm don't know if that exists as far as we know yeah, it does i mean in our time yeah. oh what like you mean the real time or like 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 the 2409 time i don't know if that, yeah it know, does they, okay the, te the, tem the temporal prime directive was something in the tv shows okay i can and they actually ref they actually str straight up uh, mention it in that dialogue box How many times has time travel incidents happened that they actually had to make that a rule? <laughs> well, I mean, we are we already mentioned that one episode of Deep Space Nine where yes. they had <laughs> where they where they had the two guys show up. So they were clearly, able to make a DVD set of nothing but time travel episodes. To be to be fair, DVDs are kind of small. Like it was it was only like four episodes, wasn't it? Um, because it was it was supposed to be the four captains choose their four fa their each their favorite time that, travel. That was episodes. a different. No, that was a different set. There was. Oh, that the, was a different set. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did a bunch that were like Borg focused episodes, Q focused episodes. Well, and uh, then the, the Borg the Borg focused one spent most of its most of its space just on the two part with the with the Cutis. Well, what it was is they were like they were like sets of like four DVDs each. Oh, were they? Yeah, it, oh. it essentially had all the all the major Borg episodes in it. Oh, okay, I guess I guess I just misunderstood the boxes because they looked yeah. like they were just one DVD. No, which they meant were it was they were four they episodes, were like four discs. Um, okay, well that's that is better I, than I. Amusingly expected. enough, both the time travel one and the Borg one have the Voyager finale on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's both. Yeah. Um, there's one with all the Q episodes. <laughs> that, I imagine that would actually be a lot of episodes. Uh, yeah, I think so. There like, is good, it across good... all the shows? Because yeah, that's yeah. a lot of episodes. Yeah, there was like four or five for Voyager, only one for DS9, and probably at least ten for Next Generation. Is he really only in one episode in DS9? Yeah. Wow. 
Well, because they had the profits for all their days, Ex Machina needs. Oh, yeah, I guess. But yeah, there were nice little sets if you just want like one specific aspect of Trek rather than buying whole episodes from TV series. Yeah, I, I've I kind of should get around to buying the uh, Blu-ray remasters for Next Generation because I've I've been seeing stuff from them and they've been looking really good. I like that a few months ago they were they were basically advertising in theaters that they were going to be running. Um, the best of both worlds remastered, like as a movie event in the theaters. Really? Night. Yeah. <laughs> just like, 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 not a major release. Just you know, one of those like one night things that they usually use for concerts or. Uh, I've I've actually been tempted to movies. just like in t until I can get the like until I can start affording the Blu-ray sets. I've been actually pl thinking of getting the that because that because they have that as its own Blu-ray set. Mm -hmm. With I think some other stuff, but for all intents and purposes, it is. I think I think it's just of... that episode and then a bunch of extras. Yes. Which speaks so, to, yeah, to how good that episode was. Yeah, it, it, it's still kind of expensive, but it's not that bad. So, especially especially when you can especially when you consider honestly the fact that like I think that one set is still like twenty to thirty dollars, but. A Blu-ray movie is also like twenty to thirty dollars, and it's honestly about that long. Yeah, uh, and to be fair, that's that's list price. A lot of times, you'll you'll find places that have it for yeah. different. Yeah, like when when a movie first comes out at like Walmart or Best Buy or whatever, it'll be twenty bucks. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so in case people haven't quite noticed, because because we're uh, talking about like other stuff and not the game, yeah, um, we're weird. This map, this map is actually the enemies on this map are actually both uh, augments and regular Klingons. Yeah, they they uh, have the, because... the a mix of the old style Klingons and the new style, well, TNG style Klingons. Yeah, well, partially because the ship we're actually on right now is from the future, so of course it's got modern day Klingons on it mm -hmm. but uh, the fact that there are uh, augments on it as well is actually pretty cool and makes a lot of sense when you f realize what um, uh, Bavat's entire plan is anyway so we scan this so Lieutenant Paris is just on the other side but we have to go to the bridge and turn off the force field because we can't shoot through it yeah well, you know, it's a force field. Can't shoot through the wall next to it. Uh, it's, it's a wall, and we're not Jedis. We should be. Well, maybe, but we're not. So, fun random thing I noticed. Uh, these disruptors we're holding remind me a lot of the uh, RX-78 NT-1's beam rifle from Gundam W80. <laughs> this is how my mind works. You would... I don't know. I don't quite see it. It's mostly the the, and I'm not as much of a weapon expert as like, well, anyone. But it's it's the thing on top where it's got uh, the, the. I don't even the, know the, what you call that. The, the handle. Well, yeah. it's a handle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we need to disable. I'm gonna play a mini game oh. while you do that. Okay. Well, we got Bavad over here actually. Who. It looks like we could shoot at him, but oh no, we do need we to do shoot, at, shoot him. at him. Now well, is, this, is this real b modern Bavat or no? This is classic Bavat. This is classic Bavat. You can tell because he doesn't have his ridges. Yes. Okay, there we go. He he has apparently survived all of our uh, shooting him with disruptor, lasers. Dis disruptor fire. <laughs> anyway, so now we can ask him. Uh, you know, what uh, what do we what what does he want? Why is he here? And he knows we're from the future. What do you know? And of course, he knew he knew this was going to happen because he already witnessed it. Yeah. Ooh. So, 
basically the the gist is they're going to use Miral Paris's DNA to cure the augment virus that made the yeah, bridges go pretty away. pretty much. That's, That's how it happens. Why... Yeah. Canon. Which really makes me wonder how the hell this is all gonna this all works out in the uh, the Abrams universe, but whatever. <laughs> Honestly, thinking about Magic. the Abrams universe for too long caused your head is... to spiral because the entire event's first contact probably would have happened completely differently. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just well, going to stop it's... reacting to it now. <laughs> well, it, it does clearly happen a lot differently. Um, but... Uh, this, there are already enough weird things about how the yeah. time has changed in that series, including things like, I mean, I, you, you can, the, the general consensus is that enterprise still happened. Yeah. Enterprise would have still happened. But the thing, but the thing is like you, even if, even if we accept that, uh, the change in, in the past affected how the crew of the enterprise interacted with each other, the technology of the time has dramatically changed for almost no reason. Oh yeah, the, I don't want to give spoil it, but the new movie introduces like three things regarding new technology that make me shake my head because it's like stuff that never even remotely came up in the in the new universe or the old <laughs> universe, like transporting from Earth to Kronos. <laughs> well, to be fair, the first movie did have uh, something like that too. Yeah, it's still just kind of like because because like they because <laughs> you know they teleported from one planet all the way to the Enterprise as it was going through warp. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, we might as well save Morel here. We probably should. Oh, and they've already got her genetic sample, so. We, she doesn't need to be here at all. Nope. So we'll just go back to our ship and. Uh, oh, did you? Did you go home? Oh yeah, you did. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh, never mind. That's the four yeah. shield generator. I thought that was an item. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, yeah. That's my. That is my turret. Oh yeah. It's well, weird because it looks like a four yeah, shield generator because it's got that bubble around it. Well, it, it is. It is a shield generator. Oh, and uh, because we don't want to leave random stuff from the future here. We saw Terminator 2. We know what happens. We might as well destroy this ship. Because that would be bad. And the day is saved. Thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. That's what we're going to call ourselves now. Uh, I refuse. Fine. Uh, but uh, looks like we got one more battle ahead of us. I know, we have to fight more Klingons. We're screwed. Who will However, help will us we now? However, will we defeat three more battle cruisers? It's not like we haven't already defeated a ton of these. This is something that happens in any video game adaptation, but the number of ships available to sides just kind of increases exponentially. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it is just a little under ridiculous side sometimes. I'm sure if you count it out, we've probably killed more Klingons than were stayed to exist. Well, I don't think we killed quite that many, but we've definitely... I mean, over the course of 50 levels. Oh, it, well, no, not even <laughs> that many. But, like, z we have definitely over... Like, by, by the time we will have reached max level, we will have definitely sh destroyed more ships than probably were at... In any battle in mm -hmm. Deep Space Nine, like if if we were to just say any random battle in Deep Space Nine, like we have probably destroyed more ships than all of them combined. Yeah. And the Federation is not warlike at all. 
Nope. But to be fair, the game makes a point of the fact that this is a more militaristic federation than was actually in the shows. Yeah, well, because they are in a, the middle of a war again. Yeah, they're in the middle of the war here, and this is this is post Dominion War anyway. Yeah, which changed a lot of stuff. <gasps> oh, we've we're been saved! saved by the Enterprise and another Connie. You have to admit, this is pretty awesome. It is, yeah. Fighting alongside actually, the Enterprise. Yeah, actually, there is a... If you start doing one of the daily um, daily quest areas, uh, as you do space missions, there is actually a random chance for the uh, Enterprise F to uh, join you in the battle. Nice. Which is actually pretty cool as well. Now, I want to get close enough, because I can't tell from here, but is this the TOS era Enterprise or the movie era? Uh... I'd have to get much closer. So try not to kill that enemy too fast so I can get over there. Um, oops. <laughs> okay, I think it's TOS. Yeah, it's it's TOS era. Okay. Yeah, there's no lights on the cells, so... Actually... Yeah, it's it's the, uh, the TOS one. Not even like okay. the redone TOS one for, for the movie... Just the gold radar dish on front of. The oh, so engine. it's ba so it's basically just using the model of the. Yeah, uh, I mean you can tier you can one. see it from now. Yeah. Yeah, I just I wasn't sure if it would be that because I don't was that in the game originally. Yes, because if it, it's it's the model of the uh, tier one Connie. Okay, that's what I meant. I I wasn't sure if the tier one constitution was in the game originally. Yeah, because it, it was one of the pre-order bonuses. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember who who uh, gave it, but it was one of the, the uh, bonuses when you for pre-ordering the game when it, before it first came out. Yeah. I think it was Amazon. Oh, and of course Spock, uh, Spock realized that we, on. yeah. Bye, Spock. And that, in that time, they properly masked his uh, his yeah. visage. I'm pretty sure this is just a bug from the the change interface. Yeah, it it, it has to be because there is no item left behind. Fly out of my way to get it, <laughs> and then get back to the portal. It's a because time we... portal. We're not going to be late. <laughs> or will we? <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we're back hey, to we've... Hitler in World War Two. Uh, not this time. Yay! I mean, we we had to fix that the last time. Oh, that was such a mess. Yeah, the sad thing is, I just realized that that Star Trek has done the the Hitler wins World War Two thing at least twice. Don't be surprised if you get a visit from the Department of Temporal Investigations, Commander. Ugh. Let's just get out of here. Okay, if anyone asks, we didn't blow up the Enterprise. This time. This time. We might have gotten Scotty a bit drunk and given him, given him a pathological fear of women that he needed to get fixed, but... So one of the things you can get from this one is a old style Type One phaser, but the real bonus of this mission is the plasma disruptor hybrids, which are well that or the efficient impulse engine, which is also kind of broken. Oh, uh, you know, let's. Can you run this multiple times? You certainly can, yeah. And and the Cause the cause um, I really want that phaser just for novelty. <laughs> yeah, and the um. The uh, stuff also scales to what your rank is. Nice. The if, yeah, like, I'm going to take the efficient engines because I, they're I took very the array because sh me maneuver. Ah. Well, the efficient the efficient impulse engine also gives a bonus to uh, weapon. Uh, well, not weapons. Well, to to all your en uh, energy yeah. ratings really. Yeah, I'll go back and do it later. Yeah, 
but yeah, yeah the probably end up horribly engine. overleveled, but whatever. Yeah, like it's it is a great uh, piece of gear, but it is not really the like it's not really what I consider to be the best impulse engine, mm-hmm. but it is really good. But anyway. Uh, so that should actually do it for us for this week. Yep, next mission's uh, one you've already seen with the Temporal Ambassador because it got shifted in the... Uh... Yeah, they decided to put Temporal Ambassador uh, at the next um, as the next mission to finish off the Klingon War. So we will do that one off screen because I've already uh, recorded it a, a while ago yeah. and it hasn't it hasn't changed. So... Um, next time we are we are we are actually going to be doing content that hasn't uh, that is brand new for Legacy of Romulus. Uh, so we get to revisit actually... one of the most beloved locations from Star Trek V. Yeah, so it is. This is also going to be content that, as of this recording, is brand new to me because I have not done it yet. Uh, but I might have on my Romulan by the time I get. By the time we uh, get back over, because it's on both factions, right? Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it is. If, if it is, it's named differently. I, I, I don't have the list on hand, but I, I don't remember clicking, going, "Hey, that's Nimbus 3. Um, okay, but I haven't gone well, maybe, that far. Maybe, maybe I won't have done it on my Romulan, but I, I'll, I might have done it on my main captain. Yeah, because I've been, I've been meaning to do it. Um, but anyway. Uh, we will be doing that stuff next week. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you then. Bye, everybody.